hello class 10 uh, to, in today's video we are going to continue with ohm's law in the previous class we have learned that in ohm's law v by r i is equal to r this means v is equal to i r where this r is a constant known as resistance just the opposite of resistance or we can say the reciprocal of resistance is the conductance if res if resistance is considered as the obstruction offered to the flow of current then the conductance is the reciprocal of resistance this means that conductance will show by how much quantity the current can flow through the conductor so is the reciprocal of resistance and thus we can write down conductance which is equal to 1 by resistance for any given conductor v by i which is a constant for all the values of v and i uh, v by i represents the constant resistance okay so ohm's law is only obeyed when the temperature of the conductor remains constant not only the temperature but any physical conditions if it remains constant then only the ohm's law is obeyed if there is any change in temperature of the conductor or if there is any change in uh, you know any other physical quant uh, physical quantities like temperature or pressure anything else which changes then Ohm's law may not be obeyed okay so here is a graph which shows in the x-axis it shows <clears throat> the increase in current I and in y-axis it shows the increase in the voltage so as I increases as the current increases the voltage also needs to increase that is the potential difference also needs to increase if the current increases and the potential difference does not increase then you may not get this kind of graph so in order to get this kind of graph this means that when the current increases increases the potential difference so whenever at any point if you take this increase of you know current will show you equally uh, the potential difference also e increases in the similar manner so that this increase remains constant so for any given conductor the resistance remains constant only if the conductor has the temperature and other physical quantities remaining constant so we can say that the resistance is equal to del v by del i now what what does del v and del i mean I'm going to explain it slowly but it it will represent the slope of v versus i graph means this is the slope okay this is the line the graph of v i graph okay so this uh, has some inclination towards the x-axis it makes some angle that angle is called the angle of inclination you may have learned it in mathematics right so slope is given as tan theta tan of that angle of inclination theta which is equal to y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 this you learn in coordinate geometry if you have learned it then you you can understand it better but if you haven't then try to understand that slope is always represented by tan theta where theta is the angle made by the graph made by the straight line with respect to the x-axis okay so there's some angle made over here that angle is called the angle of inclination over here it is theta so y2 minus y1 means any coordinate of y okay difference y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 this is the formula which gives you the value of tan theta so over here if y2 minus y1 is replaced by v2 minus v1 means any voltage at any two given points v2 minus v1 and the current i2 minus i1 then this change in voltage is referred as del v that is delta v and change in i2 minus i1 let's consider consider it as the net current 
okay then the change in voltage by change in uh, current or just current is equal to resistance as we know v by i is a resistance okay so slope of this graph will give you resistance this means if the inclination if if the angle of uh, inclination increases and if the slope is like this okay slope is like uh, more then the resistance of that conductor will be more so greater the slope greater will be the resistance next ohmic and non ohmic resistance it's very simple according to the term only you may have understood that ohmic means those conductors which obeys ohm's law are called ohmic resistors so ohmic and non ohmic means those which does not obey the ohm's law so over here the conductors which obey ohm's law what kind of conductors does you know uh, or uh, ohmic uh, does follow the ohm's law so they are metallic conductors like copper iron etc all right the conductors which do not obey ohm's law are called non ohmic resistors so they are some you know conductors which does not follow the you know ohm's law okay so examples are led solar cells junction diodes etc okay this you will learn uh, in uh, the coming chapters okay about them now let's look at how the non ohmic resistors their graph seem like so this is the graph of non ohmic resistors over here when you increase the current and when you increase the voltage uh, on y axis okay the voltage will keep on increasing but it does not increase the current means if you keep on increasing the current okay the voltage will increase but after some time the increase in current will not be greater but the voltage keeps on increasing so this is what the graph shows okay so this is graph of uh, voltage versus current for non ohmic conductors so please remember that this kind of graph is for non ohmic resistors so the resistance of non ohmic conductor is different for different values of v or i means the resistance also if you see compared to the previous uh, you know graph it was like this straight line means it was having the resistance as um, as constant so over here the uh, the resistance is not constant as the current increases and the voltage increases you can see the the resistance is not being same it differs so the resistance of non ohmic conductor is different for different values of v that is different values of potential difference v or the current i so this is the reason since the resistance does not remain fixed for a given conductor so they are known as dynamic resistance okay next factors affecting the resistance of a conductor so what makes the resistance of a conductor more or less on what factors does the resistance depend on so there are four factors in which the resistance of a conductor depends number 1 is the material of the conductor number 2 length of the conductor number 3 thickness of the conductor and number 4 temperature of the conductor so we'll first discuss about material of the conductor now you know that every uh, you know every element every conductors are made up of different elements okay different substances so these different elements will have different number of free electrons so when there are different number of free electrons all these free electrons will move uh differently not differently but they will have different number of free electrons so 
the movement of electrons in different elements or different conductors will have different uh, configuration okay so you can say that silver copper aluminium these are some uh, some substances in which free electrons number of free electrons are more okay compared to aluminium copper has more number of free electrons and compared to copper silver has more number of free electrons so we can say silver has the most number of free electrons then comes the copper then comes aluminium so when they have more number of free electrons then the current carrying capacity of these electrons will be more thus we will call them as good conductors and those substances which will have less number of free electrons which cannot carry the charge or the current uh, more just like silver copper and aluminium then they are not the good conductors so we'll call them as insulators so remember the terms good conductors are those substances which conducts electricity uh, properly and insulators are those uh, those elements or those substances which cannot conduct the electricity properly okay insulators the examples may be rubber wood etc okay next we'll talk about the length of the conductor now if the length of the conductor is more then the free electrons will have more number of collisions and they will collide with more number of positive ions so more the number of uh, collision uh, collisions with the with the positive ions then there'll be more resistance so in other words we can say that longer the conductor more will be the resistance or if the conductor is less in length okay shorter in length then the re resistance will be less let's talk about an example if you have to if you have to supply an electric current through a very long distance then most of the you know electric uh, energy will be lost in because of uh, because of resistance okay but if you have to pass the electric electric current for a short distance then the resistance developed will be less and hence the electric charge or energy will will be received to the other end in a in 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 a more proper way okay so longer the conductor more will be the resistance so resistance of a conductor therefore is directly proportional to the length so more the length more will be the resistance and less the length less will be the resistance so this is represented mathematically as r being proportional to small l where r represents uh, r represents resistance and l represents small l represents the length of the conductor next we, we move on to the thickness of the conductor thickness means if more thickness is there okay there will be larger cross section area okay and larger the cross section area what will happen the electrons can move more easily through the larger cross section area so there will be less number of collisions okay so larger area of cross section means if the thickness is more or if the area of cross section is larger then the resistance will be less okay so the resistance is inversely proportional to the cross section area of the conductor so we can say that r is inversely proportional to area of cross section so r is inversely proportional r is proportional to 1 by a this means that if area is doubled then the resistance becomes 1/4 and if the area is tripled and if the area is tripled then 
it the resistance becomes one ninth. Okay. Next, temperature of the conductor. As the temperature increases, the random motion of electrons also increases. This we have learned in class eight. Okay. Uh, so as the temperature increases, the random motion of the electrons increases. So because of this, coll collisions of electrons with positive ions also increases. So if the collision amongst the electrons and the positive ions increases, then increases the resistance. So if the temperature increases, then the resistance also increases. So this goes with an example. The filament of bulb glows more brighter with the increase in temperature, which increases the resistance of the filament. So that's why when you switch on the light bulb first, it glows with less brightness. But as time passes by, the brightness of the bulb slowly starts increasing. It will glow more brighter and brighter. Because as time passes by, the temperature of the bulb increases and because the temperature has increased, now the resistance of the bulb filament will increase and as the filament, uh, as the resistance in the bulb filament increases, it will give more brightness because it gets heated up more and it will give more amount of light. Okay, so these are the four important factors in which the resistance depends in the next class we'll talk about how mathematically we can derive a special property about the resistance of the conductor uh, from these four factors okay and yes of course there will be some assignment questions which you need to answer please answer them properly and if there's any doubt just let me know through your mails. Thank you.